Hey, it's Dave Brown here, host of Now with Dave Brown on AMI. Check out this latest highlight from the show. Tax season rolls on. A couple of weeks ago, Paul Murphy shared some reasons why you should be doing your taxes. And I know you took his advice and got all your paperwork together. But now he's continuing the conversation on how to get yourself prepared for the season, focusing on credits available to you, like the disability tax credit and other benefits and services you could be eligible for. Paul Murphy is the Senior Communications Advisor for Public Affairs at the Canada Revenue Agency's Ontario Region. Hey, welcome back, Paul. Nice to chat with you again. Great to be back, Dave. All right, so let's start with the disability tax credit. What does the DTC give people access to? Well, thank you for using the acronym DTC, so I'm, but I'm going to talk about the disability tax credit. It gives you access to a range of credits, not just the non-refundable tax credit on your tax return, but it also opens the door for applying for things like the Canada, the, sorry, the Child Disability Benefit, uh, for the uh, Registered Disability Savings Plans, and also the Canada Workers Benefit Disability Supplement. So those are tied to applying for the disability tax credit. What are the eligibility requirements for the disability tax credit? Sure. I mean, to apply for the disability tax credit, you should talk to a, a doctor, medical practitioner. It's, it, it concerns uh, nine or eight categories of basic activities of daily living that you have to have a severe and prolonged restriction in. So, for example, of those basic activities of daily living, we're talking about vision, hearing, uh, walking, uh, uh, feeding, dressing, uh, el elimination, mental activities. So there's, there's basic activities, and they have to be a severe restriction, which means all or almost all of the time. Uh, and with even with the assistance of medication or devices or therapy, you are severely restricted in your abilities. And it has to be prolonged, so a minimum period of 12 months. Going a bit deeper into the application process, after a consultation with a medical professional, where does the application process go from there? Okay, so the starting point is you can get the form. It's a, there's a paper form. It's 16 pages long. Uh, you can download it uh, from the uh, website or you can order it from us. But uh, we have a, a digital application process now that's uh, been in place for about a year that uh, you can go online. You have to sign up for the My Account online portal with the Canada Revenue Agency. And what it allows you to do is you, you fill out as the applicant the first part of the form, Part A, which is your identification information. And then the form, the, the application form will give you a code that you bring to your doctor and say, here's, here's the code for filling out your portion of the form. Because the doctor will then go in and part B of the form, which is where the doctor certifies what your condition is and explains in some detail what, to, what your reality is. Uh, the doctors can do that all digitally and submit that electronically. And then once that's done, at that point, there's no reapplication process once it's approved, correct? Well, yeah, there's the, when the form is approved, there's two categories. There's either permanent or a time limit, and that's what the doctor will specify when you apply. So there may be a reapplication down the road, depending on how your doctor completes the form. But if, you're, if the doctor indicates that your condition is permanent, then you are not, you're not going to be bothered yeah. by the CRA generally again. I know that uh, that I have it, and every year I just opt in, and it's uh, it's really it's really quite convenient. Okay, that's the disability tax credit, which is very good for our specific audience here at AMI. But there are a bunch of other tax credits available to many many Canadians to consider during the tax season. What are they? Uh, so, so starting out with uh, there's some new credits. There's the multi generational home renovation tax credit, which is uh, brand new, and that involves. Uh, making renovations to your home for an elderly or disabled uh, relative family member. Uh, so if you're setting up a, a second uh, suite with a separate entrance, with a kitchen and a bathroom, you can claim up to $50,000 on your tax return and get back up to $7,500 as a refundable credit. So that's one of the uh, credits that's out there. Uh, medical expenses is a, is a major category for a lot of Canadians. That if you're out of pocket, you're not covered by insurance for medical devices, for prescriptions, uh, for visiting uh, doctors, uh, med medical practitioners. You can claim that on your tax return as a medical expense. So there, those are two of the major ones. And then there's there's other ones like the Canada Caregiver, Caregiver amount, which if you're supporting a relative who, are, who is disabled or infirm. 
Uh, you can claim that on your tax return. Uh, and then there's things like the disability support deduction. If you're paying someone to, uh, to assist you with going to work, uh, that's another credit that's available. Uh, there's a wide range of credits and, and benefits, and we'll, we can, I'll point you to some online tools in a minute mm -hmm. that you can go and, and, and seek out. But going back to the disability tax credit, I, I forgot to mention the amount, and it's significant. It's a $9,428 of a disability tax credit amount that you can claim on your tax return, plus another $5,500 for uh, children who are under the age of 18. And you can add that to your basic exemption, which is $15,000. And what that means is you don't have to pay tax on your first $25,000 of income. And if you don't have the type of income that's taxable or the source of income that's taxable so that you, you don't need that credit, you should still apply for it because, as I said at the, off the top, that it ties into other benefits and credits available th through the Canadian tax system. And you can transfer it to a relative who is supporting you. They, if they can use it instead of you, then you can transfer that credit over to them. Let's talk about some of the other general tax benefits out there, like the Canada Child Benefit, the GST, HST credit. That's one that I always enjoy getting in my mailbox. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Canada Workers Benefit. Yeah, so those are all benefits and credits that are available to you through filing a tax return. If you don't file, you don't get them. But So the GST, HST credit, that's paid quarterly and it's based on your income. It's uh, You have to have a, a, a modest income to, to qualify for it. Uh, the Canada Child Benefit is available if you are a parent or a, a, a caregiver for a child under the age of 18. And then the Canada Workers Benefit is if you have employment income that's in the modest range, uh, you can receive that. And starting in 2024, based on filing your 2023 tax return, that's going to get paid out automatically to people who qualified for it. So there's what we call the Advanced Canada Workers Benefit is going to come out automatically. Paul, you mentioned online tools, and there are some resources out there. What are the best places to go? Because certainly listening to our conversation today, there's a lot of information flying around, but everybody's yeah. case is unique, right? Everybody's file is unique. So what are the best places to go in terms of online resources? So really, I think the front page of our website to go to would be canada.ca slash every dollar counts. There's a wealth of information on that page about those benefits we were just talking about. There's information on there about uh, housing benefits, uh, such like the multi-generational home uh, renovation credit and, and, and the, the Canada uh, dental benefit. There's information on there about that. And there's also information about uh, free, tax, free tax clinics that we can uh, discuss in some more detail. But, but yeah, there's, that's the page I would direct people to for all the tools and information that you need to get started. And there's a link there too for called Get Ready to File Your tax, Taxes. So the Get Ready page that will take you through uh, what you need to do to, to get your, your papers in order and what kind of software is available for filing returns and, and what have you. That's, that's all there on that one page. Yeah, the tax clinics are something that's worth revisiting. You and I spent a few minutes talking about it last time, but maybe somebody missed that conversation. Go a bit deeper into the benefits of these uh, tax clinics going on across the country. Sure. So there are volunteer organizations uh, across Canada that offer free tax clinics where they will prepare your tax return for you. And they're set up in various ways. They're, they're, they're walk-in or drop-off or virtual. There's because of, you know, the way things have uh, evolved over the past several years. Not everybody can afford to go in person, but there are clinics that will do your return for you. You basically have to have a modest income, so an individual, one, a single person, typically under $35,000. And you have to have a simple taxed situation. So you have, you know, basic, inf basic information slips, uh, your T4, your disability, Canada Pension Plan, your social assistance. So you have to have like a, a simple situation. Uh, they'll do your return for you for free. And to find out information about that, there's the, the Every Dollar Counts page that I pointed to earlier. There's a link to the tax clinic corner of our website where you can look for organizations in your neighborhood, in your area, will do your return for you. It will give you what language they will offer their services in, and they will also indicate what their specific clientele are, including uh, people with disabilities, uh, newcomers, uh, seniors. It's a bit serendipitous that you were making some time to stop by this morning, Paul, because yesterday the CRA announced a new dedicated phone line for video relay service users. So what is the purpose of that VRS line? 
Sure, yeah, that's brand new. We just put out a tax tip on it, so we're all getting up to speed on how it works. The video relay service is available for people who are deaf or hearing impaired, and they can use a video service to engage a ASL interpreter and contact the CRA and communicate with the CRA using AL, ASL interpretation uh, services. So that's it's a new uh, service. It's, it's a great new way for people to communicate. You know, in the past, you, you had to use a TTY that not everybody is comfortable with or had access to. But now we've got the VRS service, which is, I think, it's, it's great news for, for, for deaf people and people who are hearing impaired. Yeah, those touch-tone phones are uh, disappearing a little bit, becoming a little less common around households. Exactly. Uh, Paul, you've shared a ton of points of contact here, but it's worth sharing those points of contact on the VRS line as well. Yeah, so the, the VRS line, you have to register through Canada VRS, which is a, a third party, canadavrs.ca, and then once you've registered with them, then there's a phone number to call. It's a dedicated line. It's 1-800-561-6393 repeat that so you have that it's 1-800-561-6393 and then once you call through the registered Canada VRS and, and you get online with an agent we've streamlined the uh, menu so you can speak to an agent you don't have to wait in a queue for a long time and you'll get uh, the service that you need. Paul it's been so great having these conversations with you thank you for getting us geared up for tax season. Thank you Dave. That's Paul Murphy, Senior Communications Advisor for Public Affairs at the Canada Revenue Agency's Ontario Region. To learn more about the tax credits you could be eligible for, visit canada.ca slash every dash dollar dash counts, or you can call 1-800-959-8281. Do you want to dive into more conversations like this? Watch Now with Dave Brown weekdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on AMI-tv or download the podcasts wherever you listen. Do you want to dive into more conversations like this? Watch Now with Dave Brown weekdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on AMI-tv or download the podcasts wherever you listen.